So what we want to look at now uh, to continue on looking at independent assortment and meiosis uh, is sort of the, the next step in this. So the last example that I used to look at independent assortment, we had uh, different genes on different chromosomes. Now what we're going to do is look at something that makes meiosis incredibly important, and it's also necessary for meiosis to even occur. And it's a process referred to as crossing over. Crossing over is where we have, uh, let's see, so these are two homologous chromosomes. Okay, so it's the same chromosome, right, but with different versions of it. So one was from the mother, one was from the father. And let's just say we have a specific gene here. And so we'll just uh, give this gene A. And over here, it's going to be, uh, this is capital A dominant, and this is going to be a little a recessive. Okay. Now, DNA replication occurs. They double up. And now you have, right, our sister chromatids. And that's the same over here. These are sister chromatids. Uh, and that's going to double that up. So A, and A, like that. And then what's going to happen is, in the last example, what we're trying to look at is how genetic diversity is increased. And meiosis is what establishes an enormous amount of genetic diversity, the process itself, okay? partly through independent assortment. Uh, but in addition, we have this process of crossing over where, in addition to getting one chromosome or another into the cell, the chromosomes themselves, and something you have to keep in mind, which people don't necessarily um, recognize the idea of, if this is a chromosome, a lot of times we're labeling you know, a gene you know, on that chromosome. But on this chromosome, there might be you know, A, B, C, D, E. There are multiple genes, so there's many genes on each chromosome. And this is just an example. There could be you know, obviously a lot more than five. Some genes are very small. Some genes are very large. So some chromosomes might have fewer because they have bigger genes. And then some chromosomes have more because they have a, a number of smaller genes. And there's all sorts of combinations. The genes aren't all the same size in terms of their length. What this would imply, however, is that genes on different chromosomes in our last example, the one I gave in a previous video, would assort independently. But genes on the same chromosome wouldn't. They would be linked. And that is, that's not completely true. Uh, there's some, some aspects of it that are. Okay, so we'll talk about that in a, in a little bit as far as uh, chromosome mapping and distance between genes. So for example, A and B are really close together. A and E are really far apart, right? If you look at the length of it, this is one chromosome here. Um, so yeah, this is supposed to represent a chromosome. And then these are all the different genes along that chromosome. So what happens here that increases um, genetic diversity and allows independent assortments to occur even for genes on the same chromosome is this process of crossing over. So it's during prophase one and then into prometaphase okay, is when this is happening. The homologous chromosomes pair up into a structure called a tetrad. So this is the pairing of homologous chromosomes. And that's one part of one of the stages you know, of meiosis. However, what we're looking at here is something else is going on right here in this area. Okay. In this particular area, we have something we're going to refer to as, I guess we'll, we'll just instead of redrawing it over here, a chiasmata. Okay. So you can see one chromatid here is crossing over with another. And I colored them different, even though they're the same chromosome, one from the mother, one from the father, just to so we can actually see the difference between the two of them. And that little bit will swap. Now, if we kind of follow our example here with the um, chromosomes, if I put E 
down here. So we have, let's say this chromosome has the dominant, I mean, and you can have dominant and recessive all mixed on the same chromosome, but just, this is just to simplify the uh, example here. So in this particular one, this is the dominant for the A, the dominant for the E, the recessive for the A, the recessive for the E. They duplicate, so you have the side is all dominant, the side is the recessives. And so we have dominant, dominant, uh, dominant, and now dominant over here. And this is the, whoops, I did the A's all over the place. They should have been E's. Okay, E and E, and then the recessives, A, A, little E, little E. During this process, right, of crossing over, when this, this uh, chiasmata forms, you then get splicing where one homologous chromosome is cut and then a this, it's cut, the other one is cut in the exact same location and the pieces are swapped. So you end up with something like this down here. Where you have recombination. So now, if we are to look at these chromatids here, this one here is dominant for the A, dominant for the E. This one here is dominant for the A, but now down here it has the recessive for the E because it took a piece from the other. So this chromatid here is actually, let's say this the green one is the paternal father and the orange one here is maternal from the mother. This chromatid here now is a hybrid of paternal and maternal DNA mashed up together into one chromosome. And so this way we can have the dominant and the recessive gene for two different genes on the same chromosome. Whereas originally that particular parent was only able to give uh, from that particular chromosome the dominance. But now you have two options. It can either give the dominant for the A and the dominant for the E or the dominant for the A and the recessive. And over here you have recessives for the A, but where the crossing over took place, you now have the dominant for the E and the recessive. So this one is, so when these split, I'll give, just do this here, uh, A and then capital E and then little A, little E. So when meiosis two occurs and then you get the next division where the sister chromatids actually pull apart and then you get the new cells what you'll have is the, this particular chromatid here which would be a chromosome with the uh, dominant a dominant e then you'll have this one with a dominant a recessive e this one here with the recessive a dominant e and both recessives essentially you just have all the possible combinations if this didn't occur, okay, so if this didn't happen, if there was no crossing over, okay, so versus, right, with no crossing over, here, my colors are flashing, here we go. Here, and if no crossing over occurred, so then you have the dominant A, dominant A, dominant E, dominant D. And then you have the lowercase uh, recessive A, and then the recessive E. And then when these will split, you know, they'll split through uh, first division in meiosis one, then there'll be a second division uh, in meiosis two, but then these will separate, these will separate, and you would just have Dominant, 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 recessive, 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 recessive. So you don't really see then, you know, this is again, this would be after meiosis two uh, occurring when you get then the gametes forming. And this wouldn't separate them or pull them apart. They would all be together. So this one would have very few options. Uh, and this one had a few options, uh, but because of crossing over, we have many more options.
also keep this in mind uh, is that so this doesn't happen actually there is crossing over and actually there has to be crossing over for uh, the meiotic division to take place so there's a lot of signals and control and regulation of meiosis and without going into all the the details of it because they cross over as fibers I just want to get a different color so I don't confuse this as the fibers start to pull all right on the homologous chromosomes to separate them the crossing over region creates some tension and that's actually part of the signaling they won't actually pull apart unless there is that tension right there because the the crossing over the the chiasmata has formed and the recombination has occurred now keep this in mind as well you can have whoops I lost the color again uh, multiple regions of crossing over so this is supposed to be this one here I know it looks a little crazy I'll, I'll explain this in a second what's going on here and this one here and this is in the cell so what we're having here is in the example I just drew over here and the example you're gonna see in most books most places you'll see for crossing over a single synapsis again in reality there are going to be you know, more than one synapsis uh, occurring during this time so you won't just have a single section swapping you will have multiple sections of the chromosome swapping. So the new resulting chromosomes, uh, I'll give an example like for this one here, when it's dry, it as well. When it's, uh, well, we'll just do it like this. Um, So it, it, it's resulting in then this region, that region. So maybe then, you know, the A maybe has been, uh, the A is still there, but maybe the B is swapped, the C and D are still there, and the E is swapped, you know. So maybe now we have uh, this where it is uh, A, C, D, but it is lowercase. And again, I'm, I'm doing this for simplicity sake. Uh, and unfortunately, most people um, try to do things to keep things simple for students. And then many people pick up on the, the wrong bit of information that's being given. We're not trying to say that all dominants are on one chromosome and all recessives are on the other. That's not the, the case. It's just easier to see this in the simple example if we're doing that. You know, so. Just know that this chromosome could have a whole combination of some dominance for some genes, some recessives for other genes. But in trying to follow that or track it, it becomes then very tricky. That's why you usually don't see these kinds of drawings. It's because it looks just too messy and it's difficult to track and follow. But what you need to understand is that when meiosis occurs, the homologous chromosomes pair up Okay, during the tetrad formation. Right, There is synapsis, or called crossing over, right? And then there is a recombination where there's a cutting of these two chromatids and then pieces of genetic information are swapped. So you get alleles from one chromosome swapping with the other. And that that can happen actually at multiple places along those chromosomes. You can have a number of different genes that are swapped between them and then you end up with some of these chromatids that are hybridized. So they're a combination of maternal and paternal DNA all in the same chromosome. Right? And that's what really then creates a massive amount of genetic diversity and almost an infinite number of combinations of offspring. Because if we just went through basic independent assortment with the different chromosomes, we can have a lot of combinations and variation, but it's not infinite. There's a set number that you can calculate based on the number of genes and chromosomes. However, 
With this, it's infinite because it's not always going to happen. The same location, uh, different a number, different numbers of genes might be swapped. Different times this occurs, so it's always going to be something different every time. Okay, so keep this in mind. Um, let's go over the basic terminology for crossing over. You don't need to know all the details and, and all the regulation processes and all that, but just that that it does occur and how it contributes to genetic diversity.